Hello everyone. I'm really happy to be talking with Manika Chaudhary, the founder and CEO of Adira, a digital company that helps women take better care of their families. Welcome Manika. Thank you Deepa. Thank you for having me. Uh so Manika, I was actually going through your profile. By the mm-hmm. way, it's a very impressive one. I realized that I won't be able to do any justice by reading oh. a few lines whatever I'm going to write. So I thought it would be better if I ask you. So can sure. you please introduce yourself? Sure, certainly. So um Deepa uh, prior to um uh, becoming the founder of Adira which is a digital company as you mentioned uh and I started that in 2018 prior to that I worked for a global pharmaceutical company for almost 30 years. Um wow. and I worked for them all over the world and um just had a blast doing it. Um uh, always on the business side of things but I pretty much did every function there was to do so i spent about 13 years in the us business uh running marketing sales uh working in in managed care um then i went into global marketing for 7 years where i really got to understand the whole drug development process um and and uh truly as we watch uh, in today's environment sort of the vaccine development i have a real appreciation for the effort that that has gone into not only what you see today as the output but the decades of work that went went into developing the platforms on which these vaccines are 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 developed so i digress mm-hmm. but my my salute to all the scientists and to the pharma companies that have brought us these vaccines um and i have a real appreciation for that because that's what i did for about 7 years i uh, worked closely with the drug development process then i went into operational roles i uh, worked in India uh, for three years ran uh, a business unit uh, of about 400 people and uh, from there um, i actually went to become managing director of uh, central asia so i lived in almaty kazakhstan uh, which is an interesting story in and of itself i uh, i honestly when they first offered me the job i'm embarrassed to say i didn't even know where where central asia or kazakhstan was on the map i had to look it up um and um i didn't speak russian and so uh when i went there um you know uh, it was a whole new experience uh i lived there for 2 years and um uh really have nothing but warm feelings and respect for the people of kazakhstan for my team um that that you know worked with me in kazakhstan and have wonderful memories and then i was brought, brought back to the us uh to launch a product uh, to prepare for the launch of a product uh for osteoporosis and that's when my love affair with uh the woman as uh, a consumer the woman as the chief wellness officer of her family and my love affair with digital started um in in 2015 when i returned to the us and then in 2018 i took the plunge i uh, left the pharmaceutical company that i was working for and and um uh, jumped into starting um adira so what is this what is the significance of the name adira what does it mean ah so that's a wonderful question so adira the word means a strong noble and oh. powerful woman wow yes so which <laughs> language is that it's 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 in yiddish and the reason we called it adira is because we think that the woman in her avatar as the chief wellness officer of the family truly is strong and noble mm-hmm. and powerful and you'll notice that only one of those words is kind of what i would call a soft adjective which is noble right noble. but the other two adjectives are strong and powerful because we are really um working with the woman in her decision making role not mm-hmm. in her caregiving role i really like this word chief wellness officer so who came up with this uh, word 
I cannot claim to have come up with the word. Um, it existed, the phrase existed. So you, if you look in literature, you'll find a couple of um, uh, you know, phrases that are used for women in this role. Um, and again, it can be a man. There are a couple of different phrases that get used. Chief medical officer, mm -hmm. doctor mom, and chief wellness officer. So actually, mm. when we started Adira, we did a little bit of research to look into what was the term that appealed most to women. And they liked chief wellness officer because they said that our job starts not only when people get sick, but really our job starts to prevent the sickness. And therefore, they like chief wellness officer better mm. than chief medical officer or doctor mom. You, were, you have been working in a like a big pharmaceutical company in a very good position. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's a well-paying job. <laughs> but for you to become an entrepreneur, to quit everything and to start something from scratch, I mean, what, oh, what made you do that? What was the decision-making okay. moment? I'll tell you, it was probably three things um, that, that led me to take this decision. The first was um, I spent uh, five years in the emerging markets and I felt like my brain got rewired in that period. Like my brain started mm -hmm. looking for where is the opportunity? How can you connect the dots and how can you do something um, that is truly incremental, revolutionary, innovative, right? So when I came back to the US where everything was much more predictable, you had teams who had a lot of know-how and knowledge, my brain just said, I don't have to do the day-to-day -day job because there are very good people, you know, who are, who, are, who are doing that. I need to think about what's the leap forward. How are we going to be transformational? How are we going to be innovative? And that then led me to this decision that I had to become an entrepreneur. The, the second thing is that I've always been passionate about women's causes. I am a diehard uh, feminist um, and, and uh, women's causes have, have always, um, uh, you know, um, been a passion of mine. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted, when, when I brought, was brought back, I was, uh, you know, uh, leading women's health businesses. And so when I saw this opportunity to do something um, that was empowering women in their role as chief wellness officers, that was an opportunity I couldn't let go. So that's the second reason. And the third reason is, um, in many times in my career at the pharma company, um, I took risks with my career. And when I took risks, I found that other people, mostly women, but also men, followed suit. I felt that, you know, um, after you're 50, and if you're female, and if you're Asian, People don't see you as a digital startup entrepreneur, right? And I thought this is my opportunity to break three glass ceilings in one go. So those were my three reasons for taking um, this insane leap. And I haven't regretted it since. I feel like my brain's gotten 30 years younger um, and um, I'm loving every minute of it. When you were mm -hmm. brought back from uh, to U.S., and that was around that time um, you made the decision to start mm -hmm. Adira, correct? So is there, um, did something specific happen? So, uh, so actually uh, it was uh, when, when I was brought back, uh, the charge was that, you know, we really need to think differently about how we launch products, how we, uh, you know, bring products to the market, right? And, and again, 2015 is only five years ago, but, you know, completely different environment, right? And right. so um, when we were looking at the target audience, which was 50 to 70 year old women, everybody said, oh, 50 to 70 year old women, they're not going to be digital. You have to do TV. You got to do magazines. And, and um, what we found was that that was not the case. 70% uh, of those women uh, were using uh, smartphones. 90% uh, were using uh, laptops. And uh, they very much were digital and very much were part of the social media revolution, right? So, so the the journey started over there. Fascination with woman, women was always there and the digital part was there. And then um, actually ended up going from that assignment to having responsibility for all of the women's health products. Again, the consistency was that women said, I'm too busy taking care of everybody else. 
I don't have time to take care of myself. There was a minute in a meeting where I said, let's help her take care of her damn family so that she will get to taking care of herself. And if you ask me, what is the moment that Adira was born? It was born uh -huh. in that meeting, in that statement, which is we want to help her take care of her family to make good health decisions and to know how to implement those decisions so that ultimately she will be able to take care of herself once her responsibilities with her family are done. So that's, that's the moment uh, when Adira was born, at least in the brain. Okay, now let's talk about Adira. Is it artificial intelligence AA based program or how does it work? Okay, so, so uh, what we do is uh, we um, basically start off with some fundamental problem. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, we uh, were approached by a state department of health and uh, mm -hmm. they had a program that was targeted uh, towards uh, pregnant women and children under the age of five, right? So, um, and they mm -hmm. were seeing a decline in the enrollment in um, that program. And we mm -hmm. worked with our client to develop a chatbot experience that the potential users of this program that the state had to offer could go through and they would be able to understand what the program is. They would then know whether they're eligible for the program. And then we would connect them to the right offices to get enrolled in the program, right? So our goal is to improve the human-human interaction ultimately. It is not to replace it. And that's why I always, mm. um, you know, worry when people say, is it artificial intelligence? It is in the sense that the decision-making is done through a chatbot experience, a conversational chatbot experience. So yes, in that, in, in that sense, it is artificial intelligence. But ultimately, when you know what your problem is, when you know what decision you have to make, when you know where to go, that human interaction is important. And in that human interaction, we are sending either the woman or one of her family members more empowered to advocate for themselves, to give that specific information that the service provider, that the healthcare provider is going to need in order mm. to give them good service and good, good uh, healthcare. Now, in the past, we used to travel all over the world and not worry about it. Today, we know that there's a lot of things that we should be thinking about, right? So we are working in partnership with uh, another uh, company to build a um, health and travel platform. Mm -hmm. And in this health and travel platform, anybody will be able to come. And in a very short period of time, in three to five minutes, they will be able to again go to a conversational chatbot experience and they will know based on their travel plans and their activities, what vaccines, what health precautions they need to take. And we will be able to connect them with a travel health expert, either virtually through telemedicine mm. or in person, mm -hmm. depending on their preference and their location. And again, based on the chatbot uh, information they provided, we will give them the dialogue aids that say, when you speak to the experts, make sure that you say these two or three things that are very important for the expert to give you good advice. I understand that this is very personalized. It's mm -hmm. a case-to-case -case basis. Yes. Um, but what is the difference between okay, if I have an issue or if I want to yeah. travel to, let's say China or some, some country. Yeah. So I can, won't I get all these information by just Googling? What is yes. the difference? Yes, that's an excellent question. So if you have plenty of time, yes, you can pull it all together. But what we are doing is really making it so that you can have a trusted source. It is personalized. It is... Mm -hmm three to five minutes of your time and we are concierging you through the process. That is what we are doing. You also mentioned that yours is a for-profit company. Remember um, what I told you, Deepa, was that one of the reasons for becoming an entrepreneur was really smashing the glass ceiling on this concept of, you know, 50 plus women, uh, right. you know, um, uh, being digital startup entrepreneurs. Um, and part of it is also that 
I have, through my experience in business, seen that that which is, that which is remunerated is respected, right? Mm-hmm. And if we had done a not-for-profit venture, people would have sort of said, yes, 50 plus women now moving into go- giving back to society. You know, it's kind of like vanaprasthashram, right? In in, uh, Hindu, philo- in, in, in in Hindu philosophy, there are stages of life. And the first stage is you're a student. The next stage is you sort of get into family life and make money. And then the third stage is you go off into the woods and you become a... <laughs> and... and Again, in that whole thing, um, I felt that making that statement of saying, no, this is a financially viable, profitable um, uh, company that is being run by two women uh, who Uh are are digital startup entrepreneurs. Um, I have a co-founder and partner. Her name is Anna Kravitz. We just wanted to make a statement because unfortunately that which is remunerated uh, that which is measured by money still is what is respected in society. It's an honor. It really is an honor um, uh-huh. to be able to run a for-profit business while having a positive impact on society.